Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Gail. We're going to Matthew chapter 6. And in this particular parable, Jesus is teaching about um, worry. You know, a lot of us are capable of worrying. A lot of us do worry. But Jesus is teaching about worrying here. And, and again, these letters are in red letter writing, if you're looking in the Bible. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put in on. See, we're not even supposed to worry about these things, what we're going to eat, drink, or even what we're going to put on our body. It's, it's not the life more than the meat. Is it being alive more than having something to eat? And the body, the raiment, isn't your body more important than the clothes you put on? Behold the fowls of the air. We know those are the birds. For they sow not, they don't work, they don't do anything. Neither do they reap, they don't plant, they don't harvest or nothing. They don't gather into barns. Yet, come on here somebody, say yet. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Y'all think about that. The birds flying around in the air, they're chirping and singing. They don't even know where their next meal is coming from. Yet the Lord feed them. Are you not much more than they? Look what Jesus is saying here. Look what he's asking. Are you not much more than the birds? Come on here, y'all. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit, one cubit unto his stature? Y'all, we can't add nothing to our stature. There's nothing we can do by being worried, by worrying and stuff. Worry don't accomplish nothing. Look at this. There are many ill effects that come with worrying. And I'm going to name a few. Jesus told us, don't worry about it. Jake, turn it down, baby. He said, don't worry about those needs because Jesus has already promised us that he's going to supply our needs. The Lord is our shepherd we shall not want. He's already taking care of us, giving us the things that we need and even some things that we want. And Psalm 37 and 1 says, if you delight yourself in God, that he will give you the desires of your heart. Come on here, somebody. Why are you worrying today? Look what the word says. Now, let me tell you that this, this part of my paraphrase right here. This is what I'm going to tell you that's written down. Worry can damage your health. We are already going through some issues, some of us. But worry just add on to the damage that it does to your mind, to your body, to your spirit. Causes oppression and depression. Don't worry. Look at this. Worry can cause the object of your worry to consume your thoughts. You could be so consumed with worry that your every thought you just is taken over. You're just worried about stuff, not thinking positive, not being productive. Thought worry just taking over. Come on here, don't worry. Look at this one. Worry can disrupt your productivity. You'll be so worried you can't get nothing done. Have you found that to be true? Don't worry. And then negativity can affect the way that you treat others. Have you often found that when you're worried or upset about something, you call you tend to take it out on somebody else? Don't worry. See, all these things are negative. We don't need this kind of stuff. Jesus said, don't worry about the things. Things that we're worried about, y'all, there's a serenity prayer says to accept the things we can't change. We can't do nothing about it. Don't worry. Just give it to Jesus today. Okay, what about this? Worry will reduce your ability to trust God. When you worry, you're saying God is not going to take care of it. Or I can't wait till he do it. He ain't moving fast enough. It's all in God's timing, y'all. He's already got it worked out. He's already got it worked out for us. Look at this. Uh, let me ask you this, though. How many things are you worrying about today? Ask yourself that. Are you worrying about something today? The word of God is to encourage you today. Don't worry. Give it to God. Give it to God. All right. There's a difference between worry and genuine concern. Worry immobilizes you. 
that means it causes you to stand still. You won't move. You won't do anything. But concern moves you into action. Because you're concerned about it, thinking about it, I won't know the outcome, it will move you into action. And prayerfully, that action is in having faith in Jesus, trusting him. So look what the word tells us. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Don't even worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. For tomorrow shall take care. Take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Look at that. Plan it for tomorrow, y'all. Uh, it's time wasted. Because you don't know what tomorrow is going to be. You're wasting your time. See, sometimes it's, it's hard to tell the difference. If you're worrying, and if you're worried about uh, what's going on now, worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, oh, I might not have enough, I may not have enough time, stop worrying. Give it to God, let him work it out. But when we carefully plan, we can carefully plan stuff. We can think ahead about our goals and stuff like that. But to just say we're worried about the outcome, don't worry. Just don't do it. All right. So I thank God for this lesson today. This was just a short lesson on worry. Don't worry. Give it to God. Give it to God. So what I'm going to do is send in your message. I'm going to send you some scriptures against worrying. And I would like for you to pray tonight. And then read these scriptures and pray. Even pray the scriptures. Because these will help you on tonight. Our lesson tonight is about the parable that Jesus was teaching about not worrying. Things we can't do nothing about, don't worry. Just give it to God. This is our short lesson for tonight. Just encouraging you to don't worry. Just cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. And I'll send you some scriptures. Have a blessed evening, everybody. I love you.